This is Mary Michelle for WVIP, and I'm here today with Marianne Hoberman. She is an author of children's books. She has been writing them since 1957. She is a graduate of Smith College, and today we're going to have a little bit of a discussion about her books, but also perhaps what inspired her to write them or what she's learned about them since she's written them. So I wanted to ask you, um, how did you start writing the books? How did that come about? Well, I started writing children's books when I had children. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I had children when I was quite young. Uh -huh. And uh, I had always wanted to be a writer from the time I was a child myself, a very little child. And I had been making up songs and stories for as far back as I can remember. Uh, and then I had these little babies, and I started making up little songs and stories for them, and I got an idea once when I, I guess I had two children at that time and we were living in Cambridge, Mass. And I, my husband was in architectural school at Harvard and I was pushing them along the street one day and it was autumn and I was sort of kicking up the leaves and all of a sudden this little phrase came into my head, all my shoes come in twos. All my shoes <laughs> come in twos. <laughs> And I thought, what a great idea yeah. for a children's book, because mm -hmm. I knew the kids were interested in shoes. They were always playing with them, taking them off and on. So I got Norman to illustrate a few of the poems that I wrote, mailed it off, and to the first place, it was Little Brown Publishers, the first place that I sent it to, the first book of children I ever read, wrote, it was accepted. Wow, that's amazing. And so that's, mm -hmm. that's how I got started. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting, because I think the nature of poetry and rhyming um, you know, all of the ancient traditions, they didn't write things down for no, a long time. No, so it's a great aid mem memoir. Exactly. A mm. mnemonic device of, sure, that's the way Homer is supposed to have, uh, you know, gotten passed on um, mm -hmm. the, great, the great epics. Um, kids, I go into schools a lot uh, to uh, uh, recite poetry, work with the children in writing and, and uh, reading and learning things. And yeah, they. I can teach them poems or they can learn them. You don't even have to, do, you know, and you say it once to mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. And if the rhythm is right and the rhymes are right, they parrot it back to you immediately. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. wonderful. And mm -hmm. it inspires them and to then think start, of, yeah. And then start writing their own. Do you think yeah. it would be a good thing for adults to start talking in rhymes occasionally? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether they have to talk in rhyme, but, yeah. but certainly rhythm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's so much a part of us, the pulse beat, the heartbeat, of, and yeah. That was not atypical that I got my idea while I was walking because walking is very rhythmical. Your thoughts can kind of come to you while you're walking. I get a lot of ideas while I'm on walks. Yeah. That's nice. And I know that you are also interested in Eastern philosophy and a lot of that is about the rhythm of breathing and, and Absolutely. so Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never really put it together but um, absolutely the, uh, the rhythm of the breath the in and the out, and, and uh, we talked about this, uh, you and I, a little bit. Uh, I meditate every day, and it really does set up a kind of, I think, body rhythm. And you, you're not, well, it's not that you're not supposed to, but when you're meditating, you aren't supposed to be thinking of, you're supposed to just be sort of counting your breath right, or going right. in and out, but the ideas do come. Right. <laughs> well, and there are all and kinds that, of meditating. Oh, you know, sure. I think the rhythm of the, of the poetry yes. is a kind of meditating. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly I know the Celts, the Druids, they would um, have to study for 20 years. And what they were studying was this kind of repetition, repetition. of poems yeah. well, and that's, knowledge. Well, that's and, another and thing. Um, mm. um, repetition is, children's thing, verse, is really an ideal medium for me. Because I love rhyme and I love repetition. I love refrains. I love the kind of musicality of our language. There isn't as much of a place for that in adult poetry at the moment. And so this has been a, a place where I've really sort of found m my own voice and been able to use it. And um, Gertrude Stein the, said at, at some place, and I remember coming across this quote, that I love the repeating in things. And I love the repeating in things. And, I, and children love the repeating in things. And uh, so there's a lot of repetition and refrains in my work as well. Yeah. It seems to me that stories, you know, we always feel comfortable when we go to an old uh, ballet or an old opera. Yeah. 
It seems Absolutely. to Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's an old friend and yeah. you know what to expect. And, and uh, yeah, there has to be a nice balance between um, the new, the new and, and the and sort of tried and true and, and what we kind of can come home to. I've lived in the same house for 36 years now. And, uh, and your husband designed and it? My husband designed it, right. He's an architect mm. and an artist. And I never understand. I know people, as a child, I moved around a lot, and maybe that was why, that's why. I, but I just love being in one place, getting to know the same place season after season, watching the changes. Um, yeah, I'm a real stick in the mud, which is a good thing, because my husband is too, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's not. Yeah. Uh, do you garden together? Uh, he does the, the bone, the, big, uh, he, as an architect and a designer, he's built lots of walls and terraces. And uh, so he does the bones, you know, the skeleton, the scaffolding of our place and uh, the paths, all kinds, he's done all kinds of things. And I do the, the, the guard, the growing things, you know, and he goes out and I say, dig a hole there. And, he does, <laughs> usually. <laughs> because I think this area is very, there's so many people that are involved in gardening and, yeah. and it's part of their, really, I think their spiritual practice Absolutely. in a way. Absolutely, we're so lucky. We're, mm -hmm. I mean, it's so beautiful and so varied and the rock formations, are, we're on particularly rocky land and it, it's just so inspiring, you know? It, uh, and you can keep doing new things and then you take a tree down and the sort of ecology changes, the sun comes in and you, you kind of try things. I'm having a great- Noticing the seasons, fun. I think, is an ancient yeah. idea. Yes, you know, yes, and the meditation can back. help you mm -hmm. with that too because each day, you know, you're repeating and yet it's a different day. You look out the window, it's a different season. I, I keep a journal and so, uh, that, you know, keep a record of the Is there rhyme the in the journal? <laughs> when I get ideas, I kind of will stick them yeah. in, but they say, you know, it's not really, um, actually the journal nowadays, I've kept a journal for almost all my adult life, but now it's, I, since I write in it after I meditate each morning, so it's, it's more connected to the meditation than to, to um, anything that I'm doing, you know, for the children's books or. I wanted you to uh, tell me a little bit about this book that you won the National Book Award mm -hmm. for. The paperback version paperback. of it. Right, okay. right. But the hardcover is so much prettier. <laughs> the paperback's about half the size. It's called A House is a House for Me. And uh, again, it, it has a refrain, A House is a House for Me, which keeps repeating itself. And I wrote it back, I guess, about 15 years ago, I would think. And it's illustrated by a woman named Betty Fraser, who's a wonderful, wonderful illustrator. And she's done, she's subsequently done several of my books, including the newest one that's out. And it just starts off, I'll read a little bit to you. Okay. First of all, it's dedicated to Norman, builder of my house, my architect husband. <laughs> that's great. Anyway, and it starts off, a hill is a house for an ant, an ant, a hive is a house for a bee, a hole is a house for a mole or a mouse, and a house is a house for me. And then Betty will illustrate one kind of house that a child, this is, happens to be a tree house. A web is a house for a spider, a bird builds its nest in a tree. There's nothing so snug as a bug in a rug. And a house is a house for me. And it goes on and on that way with animals and where they live. And a kennel's a house for a dog, a dog, a dog is a house for a flea. But when a dog strays, a flea sometimes stays, and then it may move in on me. <laughs> right. <laughs> for us, we've all had that experience. <laughs> and it gets kind of, uh, mm -hmm. it just goes on and it builds and it builds. And uh, let's see. Well, it talks about pockets being houses for pennies and pens being houses for ink. And then it, it ends this way. A house is a house for a story. A book is a house for a story. A rose is a house for a smell. My head is a house for a secret, a secret I never will tell. A flower is at home in a garden. A donkey is at home in a stall. Each creature that's known has a house of its own. And the earth is a house for us oh, all. Gives me goosebumps. That's <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> I just that that book yeah. almost wrote itself. It's yeah. wonderful. Sometimes you know you. Uh, Books take different lengths of time, and, and poems do. But that was written as a long poem, and as I say, it was it was given to me almost. I, I always felt that way. 
Okay. And the architecture is particularly symbolic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> with your husband? With my, absolutely, it all fits in. It really does, yeah. it all fits and in. And you were and saying that it also is taught to children as a... Well, they just, um, it turns out, you know, they have different units, I guess, in, in uh, curricula. And uh, this, I guess, first graders or second graders, I think it's first, have the house and home and the family as one of their units, it, and it's turned out that this book has become pretty standard, which is very nice, because wow. it sells a lot of copies. <laughs> and, uh, and it's and, an introduction to... And it's an introduction to houses, and so the children will figure out their own house, you know, uh, they'll go on from, uh, they think of, let's see, oh, they think of one, I could write a whole other book with the ideas they've had for what houses are and what they're for, and they send me books that they've made, and when I go into schools, they're all familiar with it. So it's nice. I think the jackpot ones. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think any of them go on to be architects? Um, I don't know if they become architects, but every, of course, you go to, children love to, to um, write stories and poems and draw. And when you go into a class and you'll ask who wants to be a writer, or who wants to be an artist, or who isn't a writer, and all the hands go up. It gets killed later on, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And now that they're cutting so many of the art programs in schools, and the music programs, no. it's, it's really, it's really bad. But uh, anyway. Well, these things go in cycles, and hopefully it will come back. Well, we have to get up and fight for it, perhaps. We have to fight for it, absolutely. Right. And the National Endowment, and right. funding for that, mm -hmm. and all of the above, yeah. yeah. When we come back, we're going to further our conversation with Marianne Hoberman and her wonderful children's books. Thank you. This is Mary Michelle for WVIP, and I'm back with Marianne Hoberman. She is an author of children's books, and we're going to continue our conversations about the various ways that her beautiful books have inspired so many. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, this one book in particular. It, uh, is it Fathers, Mothers, Sisters, and yes. Brothers? Fathers, Mothers, Sisters, Brothers, uh, um, a collection of family poems. And this uh, book was written when you decided to go back to school? No, this was actually, I, I, I met with a dry patch, writer's block, okay. whatever. <laughs> uh, it was, um, oh, probably about 12 years ago, even longer. My father had died. Uh, my children were really quite grown up. And I just wasn't, it wasn't coming to me, the stuff for young kids. And so I went out, I got a couple of jobs, including one at the Jung Foundation in oh, New York. And, mm -hmm. and um, I worked for them part-time for a while and, and a couple of other office things I decided I didn't really, I got exhausted running into New York, etc. And uh, so what else to do? Go back to school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so mm -hmm. I went to graduate school and I, and I went to work and I sort of was fulfilling a lifetime uh, dream. I went uh, to Yale and I worked toward my doctorate in English literature and I had a wonderful time and I got through all but dissertation and uh, my dissertation, I, I wrote a prospectus for it and it was going to be on the sister-brother relationship uh, in 19th century women's English literature, the Brontes, uh, um, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, George Eliot, Jane Austen, all of whom had brothers, and all of whom except Jane Austen said at one point or another, my brother is the most important person in my life. And that's wow. very mm. different mm. from our sort of Freudian, you know, parent-child mm -hmm. uh, kind of emphasis in this century, which is changing again now. Robert Bly has just come out with that book, The Sibling Society. Yes. Anyway. Um, so you think it's going back to that idea of the well, brother or sister? I, I think that um, sibling ties, which have always obviously been terribly important. Um, but I think now with perhaps people living longer, mm -hmm. with smaller families and a lot of people not having children, I think that the, the um, I think sibling relationships are kind of mm -hmm. taking on a new importance, but they never were unimportant. Right, of course. And yeah. in the 19th century, where, mm -hmm. particularly for sisters, that was my emphasis, where girls often didn't marry, where they weren't allowed to do 
things that boys were allowed to do. They weren't allowed to get educations and go out of the home. Their brothers often were the only males of their own generation that they got to know it all well. And uh, it's played out in many, many ways in these novels and in the, the lives of these novels. How fascinating. It is fascinating. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I never did that. But I wrote a very long perspective. Yes. <laughs> Well, anyway, you did get it out in this. Well, in a way, I did, yeah. yeah. And then, um, so I, I meant to do that dissertation, but I didn't. And I got home, and it was so nice to sort of, after having passed the orals and everything, to come home and uh, see my friends and have lunch with them and work in my garden, etc. And the dissertation did not get written. I just didn't have the discipline for it. But I did get back. I had a second wind with children's books. And so I've been writing lots of children's books since. And one of them is this one, Fathers, Mothers, Sisters, Brothers. And it, uh, it's just a, a subject very close to my heart. And uh, it, I sort of drew up a lot of memories of mm -hmm. my own childhood. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just had a lot of I had a lot I of fun with it. I think oftentimes, don't you, in life, it's circuitous, yes. so, right? Yeah, it takes, yeah. It you, takes, go, you come round and round circle. again. Absolutely. And sometimes, sometimes yeah. you have to work very, very hard in to, one yeah. direction to, to bring to, it yeah. to clarity yeah. in another. And to get back so to the I think, beginning. And this is really important. I think that children's books, I think, are as important sometimes to the parents for them to get to the heart of what it is that they really need well, to know, well, to make I, it said the most yeah. simply. I hope so. Yeah. I, yeah. I was just in New York at a, at a school in Spanish uh, a Spanish-speaking school, public school, where I spent three days recently. And uh, the, a lot of the mothers who came, they had a workshop too. They don't speak very uh, good English. Some of them don't speak at all. And they're not very educated, some of them, in Spanish either. And they were each given a copy of this book by the foundation that sponsored it. And they treated the book as a book, not as a children's book, mm. but as a book. It was very gratifying. Mm -hmm. There's one poem in here that maybe I'll read. Yes, because, go for uh, it, yeah. I think it really is sort of speaking to a lot of the, this meant a lot. I get, I, usually when I do this poem, it's called Four Generations, and I ask children if they know what a generation is. I couldn't even explain to you or define <laughs> to you a generation. So are the kids too, you know, but yeah. they'll say, well, my mom or my, you know, that kind of, yes. And so I get four little boys, uh, usually little boys, because the pictures are of boys. Mm -hmm. And I say that you're the young man who's saying the poem, and the next one is, he's your father, and the next one, he's your grandpa, and the next one, he's your great-grandpa. And so here we go, four generations. Sometimes when we go out for walks, I listen while my father talks. The thing he talks of most of all is how it was when he was small and he went walking with his dad and conversations that they had about his father and the talks they had when they went out for walks. Oh. And so it's yeah. done in four little you know, couplets. Mm -hmm. And so we can talk about all kinds of things with that. But the children get a great kick out of that, you know, that we're figuring out who and it's all. Uh, anyway, that's great. Mm -hmm. But so that poem, you know, it's very, very simple, but it sort of touches on something mm -hmm. in our family. Till my mother died recently, we had our four generations oh, too, and, yeah. and it's, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful feeling. Mm -hmm. Well, that you know, I think people are endlessly interested in, in the thing about the family and how it all works and how it's connected. And they're and so different now. Mm -hmm. That's the another mm -hmm. thing that I tried to do in this book because families are not just the little nuclear family anymore. And a lot of kids feel left out if you just say a family consists of mommy and daddy and Dick mm -hmm. and Jane and the puppy. And so I wrote poems about uh, step sisters, step uh, brothers and sisters, and mm. half brothers and sisters. There's one called half whole step, and hmm. excuse me about adoption and um, divorce. Mm -hmm. There's a poem about divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, it isn't said, but it's about a little boy who says, "My father doesn't live with us. It doesn't pay to make a fuss, uh, but yet I feel unhappy." I miss him, and that's the little refrain mm -hmm. each time. Well, it's nice, I think, for people to think that it's not that they're not normal. Absolutely. Right? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, the normal thing these what days. What is? <laughs> exactly. What is normal? The, yeah. The, the uh, not normal <laughs> right, thing is the right. nuclear family. Exactly. And so I wrote a, a mm -hmm. kind of catch-all poem, a, a beginning introduction poem that asks the question, what is a family? Who is a family? And then answers it in all kinds of ways. And in the end, what it's 
somebody, let's say, all of your family plus you is a family, mm -hmm. and that's it. It can yeah. be one person, it can be a dozen people. Yeah. That's what a family is. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's so, a wonderful idea. Anyway, mm. I, I had a very, a very good time writing that mm -hmm. book, and I love the illustrations by a woman named Marilyn Hafner, and. Uh, they're all all colors, all shapes, all sizes, mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. and that too is part of the theme. Okay, I the question I would like the final question. Well, it may not be the final question, mm -hmm. but to wrap it all up, because the nature of what uh, I'm trying to do in, in in all of my conversations is talk about the nature of taking time, and I think that taking time is something that one does in a meditative, reflective mm -hmm. kind of way. Mm -hmm. So your your final book, my song. Well, not your final book, but yeah. <laughs> your a most late, recent, yes. yeah, yes. a late but recent book. Uh, talk somewhat about this idea yeah. of meditative or reflective. The poetry is. I think so. It's a. Uh, it's the first anthology that I have done. Um, in other words, it's not. Uh, these are not my poems. I, I wrote one poem for the book, but I've collected poems. And then we had the idea of getting a different illustrator to do each poem. So it's really quite a unique book, and. It's the subtitle of this one is Poems and Pictures in Many Voices. And what I tried to do, I wanted all the poems to be in the first person, and I wanted the poems to be by poets of different backgrounds, uh, different nationalities, different locations, etc. I think et this is great. With the, this one is... Um, in a hermit's cottage, yeah. yeah. Um, this is by Kim, Kim Soo Jung, who's probably, I think, Korean probably. Uh, in a hermit's cottage, silent still, I sit alone with nobody, and a white cloud dozes to the strains of a quiet song. No one can know how happy I am. Oh. And children mm -hmm. really, you know, you, you can get a quicker reaction with humor and with nonsense verse, but that's not all that they respond to. And this is a poem that children respond to. In in uh, back to the other book, the family book, um, one of the favorites is it's a child is saying, uh, sometimes I like to be alone and look up at the sky and think my thoughts inside my head, just me, myself, and I. Mm, mm. And that's one that they really well, like. Well, that's quite a spiritual idea, yeah. really. It's, I guess it's, so. Yeah. I guess so. And it's, and it's uh -huh. particularly mm, beautiful mm. because in the Spanish-speaking school, there are a lot of bilingual classes, and the children translated it into Spanish for me. And it really is beautiful in mm -hmm. Spanish. Mm. And then this is the poem that I wrote for this book. And this is an idea, yes, it's put forward as a children's poem. But the idea in it, to me, is it's not a, only a child's idea. And not even to say only a child. We get our best ideas when we're children, and then we just work on them and go back to them as we get older. At least that's my own experience. That's my experience, too. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> and, uh, so mm. this one is called You and I. And this is one of my fav favorite things that I've written, I think. Only one I in the whole wide world, and millions and millions of you. But every you is an I to itself, and I am a you to you, too. But if I am a you, and you are an I, and the opposite also is true, it makes us both the same somehow, yet splits us each in two. It's more and more mysterious the more I think it through. Every you everywhere in the world is an I. Every I in the world is a you. Oh. And it was illustrated, mm. this one is illustrated, we commissioned this, the ch it's children made this wonderful quilt, oh, and they're all oh, self-portraits. How wonderful. Isn't that lovely? That's and wonderful. And so that's the illustration for that one. So I really, I love this book. I'm very proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> is this the most recent book? No, the really most recent book is the cozy book. Okay. And uh, that one is, I was telling your mom, I guess, before when I was talking to her, that uh, this one was, illust was illustrated by another illustrator early on and then went out of print and then has been, just been reissued with illustrations by Betty Fraser, the same illustrator who did A House is a House for Me. And this book is just a list of all the... Co cozy is one of my favorite words <laughs> and my favorite concepts. And this just mm. goes right through uh, 
cozy foods, cozy clothes, cozy places, cozy people, <laughs> cozy words, and uh, it just, uh, you know, it's a, it's a cozy, it's a mm -hmm. kind of cozy book.